Before I begin the review proper, I'd be remiss if I did not mention the passing today of Hacksaw Butch Reed at the age of 66. He wrestled in Florida, Houston, Mid-South, WWE, WCW, and back in WCW, he was one half of one of my favorite tag teams in WCW history, along with Ron Simmons, a tag team of doom. They had like a nine-month tag team championship run. And I came into wrestling near within the last few years of his career. Um, I miss his stuff in Mid-South. And I'll say this, as far as, you know, today's fans, I'm not saying that none of today's fans don't know Butch Reed. I need to go back and watch a lot of his stuff in Mid-South. And some of his stuff in Florida was really good, too, at least the stuff I was able to see at the time. But his Mid-South stuff, the promos, the physical street fights, the fact that he just went full bore. He was Hacksaw. He was a natural. That's why WWE called him the natural Butch Reed, even though the blonde hair didn't understand why they did that. Still, he was the natural Hacksaw, if you really want to mash those two up. He was just freaking insane. He was great. He was a big part of why Mid-South was so successful and why Mid-South Wrestling is talked about as being, you know, still a great goddamn territory and why a lot of their matches still hold up today. Butch Reed was a big part of that. And then, you know, in WWE, he wrestled against Coco Beware, you know, two African-American wrestlers on a huge stage like that. That was a big goddamn deal. It's a shame it took till 1987 for it to happen in front of a crowd that big, but then again... Before 1987, there weren't crowds that big. There were big crowds, but that is something that uh, should be a huge is that is a huge part of Butch Reed and Coco Beware's legacy. Butch Reed was a big part of that. Coco Beware was a big part of that, and it was a big goddamn deal. Um, Butch Reed should be remembered as being a tremendous promo, a tremendous wrestler, a tremendous athlete. He was fucking incredible. It's a shame the injuries caught up with him and he had to retire in his mid to late 30s, at least as far as full-time competition. But he even appreciated today's uh, talent. Apparently, he said about Will Hobbs, that's the new hacksaw. And that speaks highly of the character and how uh, Butch Reed perceives today's talents. Will Hobbs does have a lot of potential. And if he can even be 50% of what Butch Reed was in his prime, that's going to be a tremendous way to carve his own legacy and also honor Butch Reed's legacy. Share your favorite moments, promos, matches in the comments. Uh, share share full clips if you you know full matches, links and stuff like that. Share them on Twitter. Let's keep Butch Reed's career and legacy and life alive because Butch Reed will be sorely missed. I may do a full tribute at some point, but I just wanted to do that here to start this. Now. I'm John Rentham with my review of WWE SmackDown, and it is the post-Royal Rumble SmackDown. They also have Elimination Chamber coming up in about two weeks. They have announced exactly zero matches. I get it. The Rumble just happened. They only have, you know, 20-some-odd days to build Elimination Chamber. The fact that they haven't even tried proves that they're just going to phone this shit in. Now, that doesn't mean it's going to be bad, but it's also the final pay-per-view that they're going to have on their own WWE network before the network goes to Peacock TV in March and we get Fastlane as the first event. So it's kind of funny that when the network first started, it was, you know, Elimination Chamber was the last pay-per-view and then the network started the day after. And then you got, and then Mania was the first uh, network event and it was a mess and everything because of the servers melting and all that. But anyway, they'll be going to Peacock TV soon. Please let it not suck. That's all I say. Anyway, so as far as the show, they put a uh, graphic tribute to Butch Reed. And of course, rest in peace, Butch Reed. And they have rumble clips and then to the award-winning WWE Thunderdome. What awards have the award-winning WWE Thunderdome won? Fake awards? Legit? Does anybody care? I'd actually like to know because I have no fucking idea. Reigns, Heyman, and Jay is back. It's good to see Jay back. Hopefully he's all right. Apparently he's been injured for a bit. Uh, Reigns talks about Edge and, hey, why am I out here first? Why is Edge not out here first? Tribal Chief, la-da-da, he's got to acknowledge me. And I'm not trying to blow off what Reigns says, but he was pissed. He was just absolutely upset. And then more piped-in crowd noise. Piped-in crowd noise was in overdrive today. And then Reigns uh, still completely upset. He's upset the Edge isn't here yet. And, like, this is your only chance. Give me your decision by the end of the night. And then we start off with a bit of a whimper as far as the first match. Dominic's making his entrance along with Ray, and then Corbin blindsides both of them. Uh, dumps Ray off the stage, like, you know, the two feet of stage. But he did throw him about, like, another ten feet, or Ray just, you know, did about, you know, he did a barrel roll. And then he beats up Dominic, and then we have this match. So it wasn't very good. Ray may have suffered a knee injury. Good thing Ray's never suffered knee injuries, except a lot. But he didn't, actually. He was around ringside later. 
Corbin is a seasoned veteran, says Corey. Seasoned with what? Thyme, oregano, barbecue sauce? Is it JR's barbecue sauce? By God, hopefully not. So, eventually Ray uh, hides under the ring, and he decides to hold, um, he decides to hold Corbin's foot, and then Dominic does his own version of 619, and then hits Splash 123. I have no desire to see this feud continue. Cesaro versus Brian. Cesaro has signed a new contract with WWE. Good for him. If he's happy with it, and he's happy with the terms, I'm not going to be upset. I'm not going to be upset if anybody goes to AEW, goes to WWE, goes to, stays with New Japan, whatever. Jay White's staying with New Japan. Good for him. Don't give him the fucking championship. Cesaro is staying with WWE. What would he do in AEW? Yeah, he has some good matches. They, there's so much talent going on, guys. I, if Cesaro wants to stay... Whatever. He's probably never going to be more than mid-Carter. And at his age, I mean, you know, I'm not trying to be ageist, but he may feel, hey, I got a few big years to you know, left to earn money, and or big money, and that's what he's going to do. And he probably could even be a trainer. You're telling me you couldn't learn something from Cesaro? You could definitely learn something. Um, at one point, Cesaro is bleeding from his swollen, veiny head. Stop thinking about it. And then uh, Swing, the Vegan Swing, and the Sharpshooter. This was a really good match. It was short, but it was sweet. And Cesaro got a victory over Daniel Bryan. They're going to have Daniel Bryan feud with Seth Rollins for whatever reason. And then Cesaro offers his fist. You remember to take it when he offers, your, uh, offers you his fist. You stop thinking about it right now. You know who you are. So then Bianca's promo. Who will she choose? We find out later. Maybe. Kinda. Rollins package. He's back next week. Good for him. Billy Kay joins commentary for Bailey versus Ruby with Liv, and Bailey is just begging for Ruby to fist her. I have had fisting on the brain lately. It's almost like I need to delete my search history. Always delete your search history. Anyway, the match is fine. Um, Billy tries to stop Ruby from tapping out, like tries to distract and everything, but Bailey hit what used to be called the rose plant. I'm going to call it the roll plant. I mean, I'd call it the model plant, but that just make that just sounds like I'm treating uh, models like inanimate objects, and nobody should do that. But whatever it is, she hit it one, two, three. <laughs> so, is uh, are we going to get you know the riot squad breaking up? Are we going to get Billy maybe eventually actually helping the riot squad in a good way? I like Billy Kay. This wasn't a bad match. It was at least you know it was good for what it was, and then. They had a uh, edge, you know, uh, man, a lot of fisting going on, a lot of fist bumps. He fisted Sonya backstage, and then we had we had, all had questions. Everybody had questions. Uh, so Bianca talks about Asuka, Sasha, and then here's Reginald with Carmella. So they have the hired, they have black hired help helping out helping out a white woman in February. The irony of this is not lost on me. You can tell that Fox mandated this, or Hogan mandated. I bet you Hogan wanted this to happen. Because don't worry, we're going to talk about Hogan here in a little bit. Um, Sasha's here. And then Reginald's just standing there. Just absolutely standing there. And then tension between both of them. Bianca's like, well, I can beat you, da 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 all that. And then Reginald gets in the way, and Bianca, and Bianca whips him with her hair while Mello watches. What else do I need to say? 12 years of Mello. That's basically what we're getting here. And then Sammy says he will regain his championship tonight. I want to say right now, Bianca versus Sasha actually sounds pretty spicy. Oda says in a pre-tape promo, you, you're going to get these hips. It's at this point I want to remind everybody I hate the Otis character. Don't hate the person. It's a good athlete. It's Otis and Gable versus Rude and Ziggler. The Street Profits do Zoom commentary. Corey actually says the line, these people are trying to do my job. Corey was taken over by Hulk Hogan. Once again, we're going to get to Hulk Hogan. Rude pins Gable with his glorious D, DT. 33 years ago, this week, in WWE history. Late one night! No, uh, it was Andre versus Hogan, the main event. 33 million people watched. And... <laughs> How much did they pay for the plastic surgery, Mean Gene? No, I can't really do all that justice. Hogan overacting because he got screwed over. Hogan talks about... Hogan mentions that he, you know, that he got screwed over by Andre. But then, talks about Edge. Now, I, I, he said who will Edge face. He just says, you know, will he face Drew McIntyre or will he face Roman Reigns? Betcha that um, Hogan forgets that NXT exists, which is funny because he likes to throw out some words that begin with the letter N, so you wouldn't think that he'd want to forget that. It's his way to engage the audience. I'm not going to forget that because Hogan never apologized. He also talked about being World Tag Team Champion with Edge. How much you want to bet that Hogan had to be reminded that he tag team with Edge? Anyway, Edge talks to Nakamura. Edgemura, if you will. Sounds like an Edgelord name. So, Sammy with his camera crew, the DK crew, if you will, 
The SC crew doesn't quite work as well. Versus Big E versus Apollo. I see title match. Decent enough. I can't say it was the greatest match, but it was well paced. Apollo got to show up quite a bit. Sammy hit and run for a bit and then did some really, really good offense, you know, because he was trying to get into he was trying to get that championship back. He got launched like by Apollo into like, you know, the staging area. And then big ending one, two, three. Apollo was mad. Apollo was mad, and we're gonna get that singles match possibly Mania. Wouldn't mind seeing Apollo beat Big E there. And then we get the Rollins video package again. Ed, Ed, Ed just answered to Reigns. Well, he spent the last seven months grinding over rehab. So, then here's Reigns and co. You brought them up. I'm already in your head. I'm planting seeds of doubt in you. Haha, <laughs> Ed's planting seeds in people. Gross. And then he proceeds to say, well, why don't you make him leave? So Jay leaves. Okay, thanks for coming, Jay. Goodbye. There and there's Heyman. And then Reigns says, acknowledge me. As a champion of choice, as, you know, champion of your choice, acknowledge me for the main event of Mania. And then Edge says, oh, wait, behind you. And then Owen stuns him. It's the feud that never ends. Yes, it goes on and on, my friends. Owens versus Reigns again. Unless we're going to get Edge versus Reigns versus Owens in a triple threat match. I get what they're doing. Owens got screwed over by Reigns and, you know, by Jey Uso and stuff like that. And by all the shenanigans. At this point... You're just, you're, you're trying to get more blood out of this goddamn turnip when you got too much blood out of it, and it was all dry by the time the Royal Rumble hit. So, it kind of ended with a whimper, but it is what it is. It does keep the suspense who will Edge pick, because he was on Raw, NXT, and SmackDown this week. Overall, not a bad episode of SmackDown, just wasn't great. Anyway, agree, disagree with what I said, like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Rithlin, I'll see you soon.